Hello, people of YouTube! My name is Steve Gray, and thank you for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, leave a like, and feel free to comment down below what you would like me to do for future videos. So, today we are talking about Harley Quinn Season 1, Episode 3. I know I'm a couple days behind, but I got a bunch of shows going on right now, so play and catch up a little bit. After next week, you'll probably be getting these reviews, I believe, on either Sunday or Monday. I think it comes out on Saturday or Sunday online. Um, I know it's like, like an episode behind on TBS right now, uh, but I'll be watching it online, so no worries there. So, this is an excellent episode if you like kind of girl power. Um, at the same time, it's kind of, there's a little bit PC in there. Um, there's definitely like male oppression in the episode as well. Um, and I feel like you kind of got to be in the middle. If, like, I'm not going to get into politics about it, but I feel like you, you kind of need to be somewhere in the middle, not too far left or too far right uh, to kind of enjoy the show, or you can just kind of enjoy it for the, the ride as well. Um, so kind of very feminist vibe coming off of this episode. Uh, basically, Harley is trying to get a crew together. And uh, meanwhile, while this is happening, um, it kind of, we do like a little cut to uh, Dr. Psycho from the Legion of Doom uh, fighting Wonder Woman. And he says the C word, which in most other countries, I'm going to be honest, is no big deal. You go to like Australia, you go to most of Europe. Uh, they, they throw that word out, no problem. But uh, in here, in, in good old the USA, uh, it is a big, big no-no word. You never say that word. Uh, you go for the B word, not the C word. Um, so then he basically is trying to uh, go to his kind of like evil agency type thing, um, have them clean it up. Like they cleaned up uh, Mr. Freeze's mess before. Um, I don't remember what they said he did. Doesn't really matter. We, he's not in the actual episode at all. Um, but then we go on to him being on a TV show, trying to apologize, and guess what he does? He says it again. <laughs> oh, God. So everybody hates him, and then Harley actually ends up recruiting him for her crew because nobody else wants him. Also, Clayface is in the episode. Um, I believe he is voiced by the guy that was in Dodgeball. That's the pirate, if you've ever seen that movie. Um, I think he does a lot of voice work now. There's a lot of different voices, uh, but basically Clayface like want, is like an, an inspiring actor. He can literally transform his body into anybody. Uh, he basically makes himself into this uh, very muscular dude with a cowboy hat uh, that is a bartender. Um, and then he ends up joining Harley Cruz too as well. Then in part of it, there's this guy named, we'll just call him Zeus. Um, I don't know if he's an actual powerful supervillain or not. I, I don't know if he actually has lightning abilities or not, but he's a very muscular guy, wears a toga, and everything has his penis on it. Yeah. Yeah, like, like literally, like, they go to his house, like, everything is just blurred out schlongs. Like, I, I don't know why. I think it's basically just male oppression type thing they were going for. Uh, but anyway, Harley and the crew ends up beating the crap out of him, steals his gold medals, um, and he was, like, basically, like, a supervillain activist saying, oh, go to an agency, go to bars. Harley actually did both of these things before she went to his kind of little seminar type thing. Um, and then he tried to have sex with her, as most douchebags do. And yeah, as I said, he got, he got his butt handed to him and, and the Joker got really mad because he was on the news saying that uh, don't mess with Harley's crew or they're gonna F you up, basically. So in the previous episode, we learned that she wanted to get a highway named after her and that happened at the end of this episode. She traded the gold medals for Warhead to threaten the city and then named a highway after her, uh, which I thought was pretty, pretty hilarious. Also, the other part of this episode um, is there used to be kind of just so, you know, Harley knows what she's going into. Um, uh, Ivy, Poison Ivy has her go to a tax place to talk to a previous kind of uh, su super villain-esque. I, I should say, uh, basically a black female supervillain. Um, so you got the double whammo there for the feminists. And um, basically what happened to her is nobody wanted to be in her crew. If you're not a male, nobody wants to be in your crew. You can be super, super ugly and, and you know, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be in a hero to the villain world if you go rob a bank or kill a superhero or whatever. But you're a woman, nobody wants to work with you, which is pretty messed up and is kind of what this episode is portraying. Um, so basically she had psychic powers uh, similar to Psycho to, um, uh, yeah, Dr. Psycho, and, um, because I'm forgetting her name, I apologize, and she basically created, like, characters from storybooks to be her crew, but then, instead of going to Arkham, like all of the male supervillains do, when they get beat up by the Justice League, um, she got turned into a tax book, 
like by I don't know who it was who actually turned her into it. It looked like some magician girl from the Justice League. Possibly don't know what her name is, but she got turned into a textbook, and now it gives people tax advice. And basically, Poison Ivy had her go talk to her, and basically said, "Look, this is what you're getting into. Just a heads up, just so you know." And yet again, I apologize because I'm forgetting her name. Um, but that's kind of the whole episode. So basically, the entire episode is very um, all about women power. As I said, that's kind of my general thoughts about it. Um, showing that, yes, women can do these things equally as good, if not better, than men. So no, no issues with that whatsoever. So going into next episode, honestly, I don't know what we got. Because it seemed like the first three episodes were kind of leading up to this point where she gets the highway named after her. Uh, so I'm not really sure what is going to happen um, in the future episodes. Also, it's kind of going uh, to, to the male side of it because we know that Poison Ivy's plant, uh, Frank, is male. Um, when Poison Ivy tells Harley that she loves her, as I said, I don't know if there's like a lesbian thing going on or it's just like a friendship thing. I think it's more of a friendship thing. Uh, he starts crying and tearing up. He's like, oh, this male's getting emotional. She's like, oh, and then he's like, oh, God forbid a male gets emotional. And that, <laughs> that was funny too because literally, God forbid, if a male gets emotional somewhere, um, it's, it is very frowned upon at this point in time still, even with everything going on. <laughs> and then Poison Ivy's like, yeah, man. And then he's like, F you. <laughs> I, mean, I thought that was pretty funny. Also, I think she has a thing for Kite Man, kind of, sort of. Um, because obviously Poison Ivy doesn't seem like she gets out much, so any any male that gives her um, kind of any attention, you know, she's kind of about it, I guess. I'm not really sure where that's going to go. We did see Kite Man, who basically came into the same bar as Harley, which I thought was hilarious. The crappiest supervillain there is. And he got an entire crew just saying, hey, I think I'm going to go do this. It's going to be Kite related. Anybody want to join? Literally whole bar clears out and goes join him. Friggin' messed up, man. Messed up. But anyway, great show so, so far. I am enjoying it pretty well. We got 10 episodes left. So I'm guessing there's going to have to be like some sort of altercation with Joker here, uh, because obviously he shoots the TV at the end of the episode, very angry that Harley is getting more press, uh, getting more popular, etc. Uh, so definitely there's going to be some sort of fight there. Uh, but other than that, not really sure what is going to happen in the foreseeable future. Um, I'm enjoying the show so far. We got 10 episodes left, and I look forward to seeing the rest of the season. And I, I can almost guarantee you there's probably going to be a season two, just based on how it's going so far at this point in time. My name is Steve Gray. If you're new here yet again, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good one.